yesterday's prophecies for today's world. But greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. The Holy Spirit dwells in every believer and he is in you and you need not be afraid. And now, how Lindsay's Bible study, the book of John. Then we come to the Gospel of John. Oh, you see, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written soon after Jesus died. They were all written. Uh, they were all written before Paul was put to death. They were all written before 60 A.D. So they were written by eyewitnesses who had been with Jesus, and frankly. They had not really digested the just spellbinding fact that they had walked, talked, eaten, laughed, slept with the creator of the universe. I mean, it hadn't really fully sunken in. And that's why when the Apostle John wrote his gospel, it was a long time after that. John was the one who was just a, a young teenager when he was with Jesus as a disciple. And he lived until at least 101 to 103 A.D. And uh, so he had a lot of time. He knew Jesus more intimately than any of the others. And he had a lot of time to go over and over about what he had experienced. <clears throat> and that's why <clears throat> when you read the Gospel of John, he doesn't really write to the Greek, the Roman, of the Jewish culture. He writes to all who would come after him. And he had a very, very def definite purpose but uh, when did he write it? That's the first question I want to ask. He wrote it after he wrote the book of Revelation. In fact, the last book of the New Testament that was written was the Gospel of John. Last book of the canon. You see, he wrote the Gospel of John after he had been released from Patmos. Let me read you a few things. This is from the testimony of Irenaeus, who was the bishop of Lyon in AD 160, and he got this information directly from the personal disciple of the Apostle John himself, Polycarp, who lived from A.D. 70 to 160. And this is what he got directly from Polycarp. He said, and I quote, All the presbyters who met with John, the disciple of the Lord in Asia, Asia was what we would call now Asia Minor. It uh, was primarily what is now modern Turkey. It's where Ephesus, Smyrna, uh, Philippi, and all of these ch churches were. And uh, it says, all the presbyters who met with John, the disciple of the Lord in Asia, give testimony that he conveyed to them these things, for he lived with them even to the time of Emperor Trajan. And some among them saw not only John, but also other apostles, end quote. All right, Emperor Trajan uh, began his rule in 98 AD, and ruled until 116 A.D. Now we know that John was put into prison by Domitian, Emperor Domitian. And Emperor Domitian, uh, he ruled until A.D. 98. 
And so that means they they also say that John died in Ephesus. I'll read that in a minute. But uh, that means that sometime between 98 and 101 A.D., John the Apostle wrote the Gospel of John. And uh, he did it at the urging of all the presbyters, or the we'd call them uh, elders, of the churches of Asia. They urged him to write his, his view of Jesus, which reflected a depth of understanding of Christ's deity that none of the other Gospels reflected. You see, he, he had lived long enough, reflected over and over again in the power of the Holy Spirit on all that he had seen and heard and witnessed with Jesus. And he distilled all of that in understanding that this man that he loved, that died for him, was none other than the second person of the Godhead. And so they wanted him to write a gospel that would reflect that kind of uh, man, Jesus. It would emphasize that he was a man who willingly laid aside the use of his divine power, his deity, in order to live as a man. But it shows that he always was God in the flesh. So that is why he wrote it primarily. But uh, it says that, once again, this is... Uh, from Eusebius, and uh, he is he is talking about uh, history. Eusebius lived in the 300s. He he was the first church historian. Eusebius wrote about the fact that uh, uh, there was witness of the elders of Asia to this fact. It says afterwards, that is after John was in Patmos. It says John the disciple of the Lord. He who leaned on his breast published the gospel while he lived in Ephesus in Asia. And then uh, this is uh, another quote. This comes again from Polycarp. The church of Ephesus, which was founded by Paul and in which John lived until the time of Trajan, is also a truthful witness of the tradition of the apostle. In other words, they bore witness to all of the things that he did. Apollonius wrote in AD 180 that the Apostle John, who wrote the Apocalypse, or the, God, or the book of Revelation, raised a man from the dead in Ephesus after his return from prison on Patmos. Here's another quote. This is from Clement of Alexandria, which he wrote in AD 190. He said, for some great lights are extinguished in Asia and will rise again there at the return of the Lord. Philip, one of the twelve apostles, and John, who reclined on the Lord's bosom, who was high priest and who wore the gold plate on his, on his chest, and who was a witness and a teacher, and who is buried at Ephesus, end quote. So all of these are just, I could bring all kinds of witnesses, but the point is, John was released from prison when Domitian, Emperor Domitian, died. He was the one that put all the Christians in prison. When he died, the next emperor let him go. Nerva was the next emperor. He only he was an emperor for one year. They didn't like him very much. <laughs> they killed him off. And then came Trajan, and it was during the time of Trajan that that he came from Patmos back to uh, Ephesus, and uh, there is where John did his principal ministry uh, until he died. Now, I've been to Ephesus many times. It's one of the most spectacular uh, archaeological sites that still exist. It's beautiful. I mean, you can still see where uh, uh, Paul had walked. You can see the, the big front facade of the, the library. And uh, you can also see the, the, the great theater that 
Paul was dragged into and almost killed, it's still standing. And uh, so it's, it's a spectacular sight. But one of the things that I believe is a reliable archaeological site there is the grave of Jesus' mother, Mary. She's buried there. And traditions had it all along that she was buried there. Now, why would she be buried there? Because Jesus said, behold your mother. He put his mother into John's care. And John took care of her. So wherever he went, he took her with him. John died in Ephesus. Mary died there too. So the Gospel of John was written in Ephesus because the the uh, all of the elders of the various churches that were all all through that part of the country, which is now basically Turkey, all of those elders got together and urged him to sit down and write this gospel, and he did, and thank God he did. Now, when was it written? Well just about answered that and answering why uh, it was it was written I believe about 99 AD shortly before he died so that was the last book of the canon of scripture to be written and it reflects a high high view of Jesus a mature view of Jesus now let's answer the all-important question why did he write it? Why, from his point of view, did he write it? Well, I want to ask you another question. What's the best-selling book in the history of the world? No. The Gospel of John. Because, you see, we find more evidence of the spread of the Gospel of John than any other book of the Bible. And that will answer why he wrote it. That's why when I taught this at uh, UCLA, when I was with Campus Crusade for Christ, 1962, I had a red-headed uh, uh, kind of a, a timid guy named John Reardon who was in the class, he was one of the disciples, and I was teaching about why John wrote this and the persecution he went through and all of that. And I mentioned the fact that, you know, evidence shows that the Gospel of John was the most circulated book of any book in history. And I said, the reason John gives us. And Let's look at that reason. John chapter 20. I love John because he always gives us an outline of his book somewhere. Like he gives us an outline of his book, book of Revelation. Right at uh, near the beginning. But uh, the Gospel of John in chapter 20, John tells us a lot about why he wrote it. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. All right. Now that's very, very important because it tells us that John was aware of the other Gospels and he was aware that what he wrote didn't include everything that they wrote about. And the whole church bears witness. There, this verse is not only a statement of John, it's also a statement of the church, of all of the elders. It says, many, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. So he tells us, look, there are all kinds of things I could have put in this book. But I selected these 
Why? But these are written for the purpose that, purpose clause, these are written for the purpose that, number one, you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, literally. And second, that you may believe that he is the Son of God. And then you have a result clause. And that believing, you may have life in his name. All right, there are three key words in here. The first is Jesus did many other signs, Simeon. It's a word that's used all through the Gospel of John. The reason is because Simeon means a, it looks at a miracle, something that sets aside the rule of nature something that is uh, an impossibility that is performed. But Simeon emphasizes not so much the miracle itself, but what it means. In other words, he did this great miracle to show and prove something. So he uses that word. He says, Jesus did many of these signs that are not in this book. But if these are written that you might see something. All right, then there is the word uh, that is key, that you may believe. Literally, that clause is a purpose clause, and it means, and the verb tense means, that you may come to believe. In other words, the things he's written in this book were written for the purpose that when you read them, you will come to believe, number one, that Jesus was the promised Messiah. And number two, you will come to believe that he is the Son of God. And that once you at a point of time do this, and you're believing it, that you might have zoe in his name. Zoe is the Greek word for life that's used. There are two words in Greek for life, at least two. They've got <laughs> numerous words for everything. But bios is one word for life. That We get biology from that. Bios is, is simply uh, natural life. But the way... Zoe is used by the Greek writers, especially John, is that it's God's kind of life. It's God's spiritual life. It's the life that we lost when man first sinned, so that we were all born with bias, but not Zoe. We're all born physically alive, but spiritually dead. And he wants us to know Jesus and believe in him so that we get God's kind of life born back into us. And he emphasized that in John chapter 3. That's the chapter I came to know the Lord. So he says that, first of all, and, and you can, if you have the book, by the way, all of this is diagrammed in it, that, that little book, you know, John the Gospel of Belief. In the first chapter, this is all diagrammed for you. They diagram the sentence. Beautifully done. And uh, it's a great book. It really helps you learn to study the Bible. But it shows that this is the reason why John wrote this book. Well, <laughs> I was teaching a class similar to what I'm teaching here tonight. And I see this, this guy, John Reardon, who's always quiet, always kind of in the corner. I see his eyes start twinkling, and boy, it was like sparks were flying in his, out of his uh, hair. And John, John looked at me and he said, uh, well, if that's the reason he wrote it, 
and this is the book that's the best seller in the world, we got to do something about it. <laughs> and I knew I was in for something. But uh, all of a sudden, this guy that just kind of sat on the sidelines became like a roaring lion. He said, I'm going to do, I'm going to do something about this. He said, uh, you will, you like, uh, you not, you know the Lockman Foundation that has done the translation of, uh, the New American Standard Bible. I said, yeah. I said, you know him personally, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, let's go talk to him. <laughs> I said, okay. So we went out there and John, boy, just like a, a, a hard nosed businessman said, now, Mr. Lockman, he said, I've got an idea. I want to get 10,000 copies of the Gospel of John and distribute them on the UCLA campus. See what happens. And uh, he, he, he talked for a while, and Mr. Lockman said, well, he said, I can give you a good deal on it, but he said, it's hard for me to give you 10,000 copies. We don't make usually one one, uh, just one copy of the book of the Bible, we usually do the whole Bible. He talked him into doing it, I think it was about uh, three cents a copy. And uh, so I said, well, John, you're going to have to help me raise the money. He went out there and he raised it. So we got all of these, all of these Gospels of John, and we had a special cover put on it, and uh, on on the cover it just said uh, how uh, how to have a full life, and uh, so we handed them out. Of course, some people threw them away, but a lot of people, most of them, kept them, and a tremendous number of people came to know the Lord through reading the Gospel of John. And I think that that was. God's idea in this. They were, this was written that people, when they read it, might believe that Jesus is the Christ, this, this Messiah, and the Son of God, and that believing they would have life in his name. And all by myself, on a tugboat, without anybody talking, I was reading in a Gideon's New Testament. I read through the first three Gospels, and all I did was get good and convicted. But I started reading the Gospel of John, and it was like a different atmosphere. And all of a sudden, I began to see things, because things were black and white. And uh, when I got to the third chapter of the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit just made me come to see that Jesus must be the Son of God. And uh, I didn't know how to pray, but I flipped to the back of the book as I was thinking, and I saw that says, if you made a decision to believe in Jesus Christ, pray this prayer. So I prayed it. I said, now sign your name and date it. I did. And uh, this peace just came over. And uh, when I woke up the next day, First thing I wanted to do was read the Bible. That was new. And when I started reading it, I started understanding. And I realized, I guess what Jesus was talking about there has happened to me. I've been born again. Well, the Gospel of John will take you far beyond that experience. And so I look forward to going through the Gospel of John. I've taught it many times, but I look forward to going through it again because it will give you a tremendous insight into the person of Jesus. It will give you a tremendous insight into who he really is, the kind of person he is. And you'll find that in the Gospel of John, uh, some, some of the syntax in there will even show that Jesus laughed or that when he was dealing with somebody he was actually smiling it gives you a lot of insight into what he was really like and I love going through that but let's conclude tonight by looking at uh, John 21 John chapter 21 
verse 24. This clearly is a statement not written by John. It's written about John by someone else. It says, This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. You see, that was written and signed in the original manuscript by the elders of all the churches of Asia. And they testified that this is the disciple who did those things, and we know him, we know he's true, and we know that what he has written is true. So, it's a very attested gospel, isn't it? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will make this a great a great experience, a great study, that it will bless us all, and that it will give us the most important experience of all as a Christian, and that is to really get to know Jesus and love him in a very deep way. Amen. Join us next week for the continuation of How Lindsay's Bible Study of the Book of John. But when you really get a grip on the fact that Jesus so saves you, when you simply admit your sins and receive the gift of pardon, that you are already in heaven as far as he's concerned. You can find more of How Lindsay at his website, www.howlindsay.com. There you can access our video and article archives. Visit our online store for How Lindsay CDs, books, and other specialty items. The Late Great Planet Earth is a timeless examination of the Bible prophecies about the end of this age. When it was published, it caused a worldwide sensation. Now, you can own the Home Study Guide for the Late Great Planet Earth. It provides valuable assistance for the study and discussion of both the book and the Bible, suggested scriptures to study, helpful questions, relevant remarks, and vivid illustrations will help you better understand this world-changing book. Get your Late Great Planet Earth Study Guide for only $10.99 plus shipping and handling. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to How Lindsay Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit howlindsay.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.